Okay, so welcome to this tutorial where I will show you on how to get um, club physics working on your Jekyll physics. So I am guessing that you already have a setup like mine where you have the proxy setup where the physics you know work on the body and that you also have some basic animation going. I want to show you what I have. This is the same thing from the animation that I posted on Twitter. So just some basic animation. Um, in my case I don't have the animation in the timeline itself because I've done it as an NLA track here and I've blended in the animation here, the blend in, so that we start out from a T-pose and then we gradually go into the animation. This will um, help a bit, um, you know, to help the clothing stay in place better and, you know, hopefully not fall off and so on. What you also will need is, of course, your clothing piece. So this is what I have right here. Um, so what you might find when you would try to add physics, you know, you would maybe try to um, add some cloth to this. So great, let's see what happens. Falls right through. Okay, so that's not that good, of course. So what we need is we need actually another collision proxy to for the actual clothing piece to, you know, sit on, rest on. So what we have now, we have these two proxies and for those I want you to make sure you have disabled the object collisions for both of them because if, if when they are on they will explode when we add another uh, collision object beneath them so the reason we now are going to add a separate collision object and not just use our main mesh is because it's going to be a lot more performant if you would just copy paste our whole main mesh you know, we're gonna have collision, uh, collision calculated on on areas that are completely not needed, like you know, for example, like feet and legs and hands, the head, so on. Because the only real area we need to um, calculate is you know the chest area. Select your mesh. I'm going to numpad slash isolate the mesh so it's a bit better overview. Uh, press tab to go to edit mode. Top right, you can toggle X-ray. And then we're gonna select about this area, something like that. It's not too bad. I'm gonna make sure that I with uh, Shift Alt select missing some of the missing edge loops. Make gonna make sure the same on the bottom. And I'll just make sure you have some. Yeah, I removed some uh, parts of the meshes um, for YouTube's sake. Um, I think you know what I mean. <laughs> In the hopes that it uh, will not get striked into the ground when showing all these things. So yeah, make your selection. Doo -doo. Okay, yeah, something about that should be okay, doesn't have to be too accurate, uh, that's fine enough like this. So we are going to hit Shift D and not move the mouse, so Shift D, don't move the mouse, then left click, and now we press P, and then separate by selection, separate by selection. Then I press tab again, now click in your mesh, and now you see you will have another another mesh. So and then I would also recommend to just close up close up any holes by selecting the edge loop, pressing F. Of course this area can be a bit more tricky to select the edges. What we can do is go to select, select all by trait, non-manifold. 
And this will select all your loose edges basically. And press F. Oh, I did something wrong. Press F. Yes, left click. Um, also, if you have some um, some parts in the mesh that are, you know, maybe a bit more complicated than they need to be, I really recommend you to simplify those as much as possible. So, what was that? Did I select this one as well? Maybe it did. Okay. Uh, dissolve this vertice, dissolve this vertice. All right, that's so. Yeah, make sure that my surface deforms are still bound so that the animation should, should still um, play properly on this proxy mesh. So, also, I'm gonna just take this mesh, I'm gonna rename it to. Main body collision, and then I'm gonna move it into the physics, and I made a new category as chest, and I moved it in here. You wanna add collision t to it, okay? And I would recommend you that you first, you know, start out with the minimal, would be okay, sort of the minimal thickness outer and inner so just put this to you know I think default is like 0 0.02 maybe put this one to yeah put put them both to 0 0.001 and you can also check single sided because yes because there will be no collision on the back side of this mesh so it can be single sided and this will help to improve stability i also recommend you to click the override normals um, in my testing and testing I've seen from other people. This will also help you get some better um, collision for your for your cloth physics. So also what I'm going to do is I'm going to pre-bake uh, the chest physics so they will not have to rebake um, all the time. So I'm just going to set this to like 300. So I'm just gonna bake. So now we have our chest physics pre baked. So now we should have smooth playback again. And we have our main body collision set up. So now we're gonna go back to our clothing piece and we see what happens when we simulate. So, well, it's something. But, uh, you know, can hopefully be improved a bit. Um, we have our cloth on here, so we're going to go into the cloth settings. Um, so the default is like 0 0.015. We're going to put that down all the way to maybe like 0 0.002. Okay. Simulate again. Okay, that's I know, already better from the distance standpoint. But uh, now we see some pieces are just clipping through the whole thing. Let's see if we increase our distance a little. Our that's already better. And also like, yeah, up the collision. Okay, yeah. Make sure you're also on here. Make sure the quality steps are in, you know, a bit higher. Maybe like yeah, 10 for the quality steps, maybe, and maybe also 10 for the collision and quality. So let's see that again. So that is a lot better already. So now our proxy mesh is actually a bit too long, right? So you see, it's actually interacting with the clothing itself and this causes it here to pinch and distort. So we don't want that. So I'm going into the proxy mesh and deleting some of those outer, some of those outer parts. 
Hmm, maybe one more edge loop. Actually, we don't really need like the shoulders at all, so I'm just gonna just gonna get rid of the shoulders completely, and then close up the hole again. Okay, so now that, now that we changed the um, the vertice amount, we gotta make sure our surface deform. Is uh, still correctly bound because now it's not anymore. As we delete some vertices, we gotta rebind those. Unbind, rebind, and unbind exactly. So let's try this again. So yeah, that's already looking pretty pretty good. So now what we can do to improve this, you know, you may want a bit of more, a uh, bit more quality steps or you know, a bit more detail in the mesh. So we could add a subdivision surface level one, let's say, and we put it above the cloth. So I'm going to disable my simplify mode and now we should have a bit more geometry for the cloth simulation to work with so I see it's already slower but we get more detail out of it so yeah that's kind of up to you how much quality you want um, you know depends um, what I also did for the animation I believe is I did some shrinking on the clothing so basically it's um, no, basically getting smaller when the animation is played, it like contracts a bit. So this is the shrinking factor, when you put it to positive it gets smaller, when you put it negative it will get looser. So I'm gonna put it about 0 0.1, let's see where this gets us, okay, that's maybe a bit too much. Um, also the think the friction is a bit too high i'm gonna like turn the friction down quite a bit okay and also the shrinking factor i'm gonna put like 0 0.05 maybe So I can maybe even enable the subdivision, uh, yeah, enable subdivision on the collision mesh, so we get even smoother collision. But yeah, now it's gonna be, you know, decently slow, uh, especially since I'm also recording and yeah, doing this, <laughs> this uh, kind of face cam thingy. So yeah, that's basically how I set this up. So what you can also do to make the finished result even better without like, you know, paying more performance for the simulation is you can add a subdivision at the end after the clothing as well. So without it, this looks like this and if you add this one as well, you know, get even, it's gonna be even smoother. Which is nice. Um, something else, you know, for this clothing piece, I also believe I added a bevel modifier as well. Oh no, it's, no, sorry, not a bevel. A solidify. And I put it under the cloth and above the last subdivision. So this will, you know, make some nice looking kind of thickness to the cloth so now i think to the last part if you struggle with the cloth piece staying in place or you know if it would like drop down the shoulders which can happen really easily uh, i would recommend you to add a addition or like to make a pin group for the p 
pieces that you want to kind of stay in place more or less. Okay, so sorry, I made a mistake. So don't add the group with weight of one, but actually do something like weight 0 0.05. Right, so when I assign, assign that with a weight of uh, 0 0.05. No, wait, 0 0.5, okay, there we go. And I go to weight paint, and now I'm gonna uh, try to get mirroring working, maybe, or not. Well, I guess not, but um, I'm still gonna smooth it out a bit. Mirroring, sometimes it seems to work, sometimes not, who knows. All right. So I'm going to clough settings and under shape pin group select your pin group. So now even if we would disable the collision on our um, collision proxy and we simulate it's not gonna completely fall down because we have some kind of a stiffness group. We can now play with this value, turn it down a bit, and I see it falls even more. But it still kind of stays in the general area where it should be. Also turn it up all the way, then it will be like pretty much forced to be at the original position, but that's not what we want. We want to have maybe like something, oh, even less. For my case, maybe like 0 0.2. Or maybe a bit more. Three maybe. And then I'm gonna um, enable the collision again. So this will make sure that the uh, cloning piece, you know, the important parts stay on, you know, stay in the mesh where they're supposed to be. All right. So yeah, the rest will then just be um, baking it all out. Um, you can do that right now, so you can get an idea of how it will look. So we'll just bake all dynamics and then I will show you how it looks like. Okay, now it's done. Alright, so now we see it's cloth actually properly interacting with the physics. So yeah, that's about how I made this animation. Oh yeah, also as well, make sure you um, make the collision mesh um, display as wired and also disable the array visibilities. So you'll make sure they'll never um, show up in your renders since you know, of course I don't want them to show up in your renders. Right, that's about it. Thanks and have fun.